Great, welcome everyone to Cuneco uh, with some exciting updates from the seller community. So Cuneco is the name for the monthly gathering of the seller community hosted by the Seller Foundation and with speakers from across our entire community. Cuneco means togetherness uh, in Esperanto. And it is our hope that Cuneco can foster togetherness for, for the seller community. Since our first Prosper retreat, uh, which is uh, pictured here, which was last fall, our community has grown significantly to uh, over 90 Alliance for Prosperity member organizations, over 300 projects currently building on Cello, and over 700 Cello backers following the coin list auction and exchange listings. Community is growing all over the world and dozens of countries. And uh, I know uh, a bunch of fellow Prosper participants are tuned in right now and seeing this picture really makes me miss spending time in person with you all. So I'm glad we're, we're getting together at least this way. Today we're celebrating the launch of Cello Dollars. Um, we'll talk about why it matters in the stablecoin ecosystem. Then we'll have an exciting product sneak preview, more on this shortly. Um, we'll also be hearing from the winners uh, of the Cello Camp, Pesa Base, really excited for that one. And we're making a trip to Colombia, at least virtually, uh, to hear about uh, some work that um, the team has been doing uh, there around microloans. After that, um, we'll hand over to my co-founder and uh, C-Labs uh, CTO, Merrick, to uh, provide some technical updates and milestones achieved and a look forward. And then it's a wrap. So we have a full, uh, full agenda here for you guys. Oh, one thing, feel free to ask questions um, throughout, the, the, uh, throughout Coneco in the Q&A box and uh, you know, we're, we're able to answer those in, in real time. Great, and with that, let's talk about stable coins and let's talk about seller dollars. So just as a reminder, um, as a community, our mission is to build a financial system that creates the conditions for prosperity for everyone. And, you know, to that, to that extent, um, we took a big steps towards that this week with uh, having all the right infrastructure in place. Um, just about two years after first announcing and introducing Cello to the world, one year since C-Labs open sourced the code base uh, and launched Alpha Horus, our AlphaNet, uh, and, you know, just actually about two months since Mainnet went live on Earth Day, uh, Cello Dollars is now live on the Cello network. So this milestone uh, brings a stable asset, the first stable asset, one pack to the dollar, the US dollar, to the Cello platform and makes it easily accessible uh, with a mobile phone. And some of you know this, but just as a reminder, uh, this is made possible in part by, by three key innovations that power Cello. First, the ultra light client implementation that allows fast syncs with the chain, even on budget phones and in limited bandwidth, bandwidth environments. Secondly, the ability for transaction fees to be paid in Cello dollars or other stable coins in the future. And, you know, compare that to, for example, Ethereum, where in order to send uh, a stable coin on Ethereum, you would still have to pay for gas in, uh, in ETH. Lastly, the lightweight identity protocol that really allows anyone anywhere to receive Cello dollars just based on their phone number, even if they're not yet on Cello, and we'll have uh, an exciting demo of that in the next segment. So since starting our journey and you know, going back to the mission here, we've been very focused on identifying solutions that enable economic inclusion, prosperity, and uh, doing that all over the world, uh, whether it's in Buenos Aires, Beirut, uh, Bogota, or Berlin, and that's just the bees. The focus really has been on the second part of that mission statement, and we'll get a glimpse of what that looks like uh, with Cello and how it's being used in a moment. Stable coins were introduced with great promise for financial inclusion and as an alternative especially in markets uh, without sound currencies. And we've, we've certainly seen a rise in the market size, especially this year, going from five to, uh, to over 10 billion. However, we think that there's still a huge untapped market for stable coins, and particularly with some of the technical innovations that I just mentioned, 
um, we see stablecoin adoption um, expand far beyond the, the arbitrage use cases and, and some of the early use cases we've seen to date. In particular, uh, we see a big lending market, peer-to-peer -peer lending market uh, alone at $34 billion market size that is uh, ripe for, for stable coins to, to actually make that more kind of uh, co more convenient and better. Uh, $87 billion digital remittance market, that $248 billion gig economy, and you know, just maybe as one more bubble, the mobile uh, point of sale market, which is $1.4 trillion. And you know, this is, we're not even like far into the journey because obviously as digital currencies become more and more widely used uh, and not just complementary traditional fiat currencies, um, the global monetary system um, is, is up for grabs. And I think there's a big opportunity here to, to improve that and make it more inclusive. So maybe now that we've covered some of the uh, tech innovations um, and that, you know, actually get to address the, the usability of stable coins, let's talk about how we unlock the true potential and how we do that together as a community. Uh, first, I think I mentioned this a little bit, the launch of Cello Dollars provides a mobile friendly form of digital money that can be used by the over 6 billion smartphone subscribers around the world. Uh, the photo here actually uh, displayed is from a, a recent pilot uh, where the C-Labs team partnered with a microwork organization to provide instant and low-cost payments uh, to power gig economy style jobs to millennials in Kenya um, through their mobile phones. Um, on the second uh, picture, you can see a, a restaurant actually in Canada that's accepting cello dollars as a form of payment a solution that's uh, um, enabled by one of uh, one of the Cello Camp finalists. And we'll hear uh, shortly from one of the from our speakers, um, who is the winner of Cello Camp, on how they are using Cello dollars to power solutions that meet meet the need of their communities. And lastly, um, already at this early stage, there are over ninety global organizations uh, spanning from leading humanitarian organizations to global payment processors marketplaces all committed to leveraging Cello uh, against these various use cases and um, you know bringing that to to their kind of user base of over 400 million people and that's just you know the initial reach of, of these early members. Today we'll be talking about two specific examples on uh, how Cello dollars uh, is already being used for, for sending and for lending and we'll have an excitement exciting announcement uh, coming up uh, as well. And uh, with that, um, I want to hand over to my colleague Nitya uh, for the next section. Thanks, Renee. Um, as mentioned today, I'm so excited to be here with you and to also share an update that's definitely new but has also been an in progress product over the last two full years um, up and down the stack. Today, we're introducing Valora. Valora is designed from the ground up to take advantage of all of the features of Cello dollars and Cello that Renee mentioned earlier. Valora is also a lot more than that, which we're going to talk about soon. So Valora is a global payments app that allows you to freely exchange and securely store money on your mobile device. So Valora actually came out of this near universal need that we saw across pilots and across user research. Um, and that was really the need to one, save what is ours and keep our value, and also to share that value with the people who matter most to us, our communities. So to illustrate this need today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about Fernando. Um, Fernando is fictional, but his story illustrates a need that we saw time and time again. Fernando was born in Mexico and now lives abroad. He makes a comfortable salary and with this salary, he's able to support his mother so she can retire, which is something that's very important to him. The catch is, Fernando's only options to send money home right now are really not ideal. His mother got a bank account recently, but even then, sending a wire transfer is expensive, 30 US dollars or even higher every month. He'd like for that money instead to let his mom do more, you know, be more independent, maybe take her friends out to lunch every now and then, um, but he'd like her to have that money. Enter Valora. So Valora, first of all, is global. 
which may not be a surprise to um, our crypto natives in the audience, but money with Valora is instant and borderless. So Fernando can send money directly to his mom in less than 10 seconds and with very, very low fees. In fact, in the time that I um, told you all of this, this transfer is already completed. Um, and if you're curious, this transaction actually took place on mainnet. The cost was 0. 0.0001 cent. So that's one one hundredth of a cent and took only 4.8 seconds to complete. As mentioned earlier, this is possible because Valora is direct. Using the power of the Celo network, transfers are easy and cost effective because there's no intermediaries, even if you've never used the platform before. For example, this is what Fernando's first time using Valora was like, the screen on the right. He actually heard about um, Valora because his friend attended an event called Unitize and thought Fernando might find the app useful. So he sent Fernando an invitation that looks just like this one. Now, I don't need to tell this group that security is important. Valora is fully non-custodial and leverages innovative cryptography to keep your money secure. I'll call these out in the following demo. So back to Fernando. He was just invited and received that text message. So next, he'll download the Valora app at the provided link and then provide some basic information. Of note, this whole time, an ultralight client is running on device so that if Fernando prefers, he doesn't need to trust a full node for communication with the Celo network. So next up, he enters his invite code. This experience is familiar, familiar to many app users, but is actually a really cool trick under the hood. This link contains a temporary wallet with the funds needed for Fernando to verify his number. And it's an easy way to get a small number, a small amount of funds transferred to him from his friend to get started. So after setting a pin to manage key access, now Fernando will confirm his number. Uh, so this is when things get really interesting. The Celo Lightweight Identity Protocol allows for decentralized confirmation of identity information such as a phone number. So you might ask, is it privacy compromising to have a phone number on chain? Well, it can be. Without appropriate precautions, someone could reverse engin engineer Fernando's phone number and then bombard him with messages of cat videos. We don't want that, which is why on Celo, phone numbers are, are hashed and verified with a salt managed through a threshold cryptography scheme. More on this later from Merrick. Um, why this matters, having a phone number makes it easy and fast to share value with your community. So the Celo Network Identity Protocol is managed by its 100 validators, which each run an attestation service. When Fernando verifies, three of these validators provide an attestation that Fernando actually owns his number. This means that it's hard for another party to verify his number and that you can be confident that you're sending your funds to the right place. So Fernando goes, eats a Kit Kat, the best candy bar ever, then comes back and sees that he's received these three codes. They've automatically been read for him on Android, and that's it. He's ready to go. Fernando is now ready to send money home to mom directly, just as easily and even more cheaply than if he was sending a text message. You just saw how easy it is to go from zero to sending cross-border payments, thanks to Valora. So you may be thinking, what's next? Maybe you're thinking, how can I get Valora? Well, today we're live at valoraapp.com where you can sign up for the beta waitlist. Also, check out the virtual booth as part of Unitize where we'll have a small preview group who can be the first to check out the experience. And with that, I'll hand off to Taylor, who's going to talk a little bit more about the story behind the Valora identity. Thanks, Nadia. And like, like Nadia said, I'm going to cover uh, really important parts of what developed the Valora brand. First, my colleague and I, uh, my colleague Jackie and I went through a bunch of names uh, that could potentially fit different experiences throughout uh, what you would eventually see at the time, sell a wallet, now Valora. Uh, the word that we kind of really took to was value. We, there's a beautiful double entendre there where we describe money and currency as having value, but we also have a subjective understanding of what value is. As individuals, we value certain things. We took value translated to Esperanto, got Valoro to maintain that solo brand integrity. Um, from there, we didn't quite like the O ending. We tried it on with an A. That actually is the verb uh, to value in a few romantic languages. And we like the eloquence that we got from switching it from the O to an A. I want to walk us through a few key moments in developing the, the visual logo type as well as the icon. 
This is an illustration I was developing when I was creating the, the illustration style throughout the app. So what I really liked about this was it was an encapsulation of what the Valor experience is. Out from the left, someone sends value into a phone and that person gets to have that value. They get to save it, they get to use it, um, but ultimately they would send it out to someone else. That reach from one trajectory out to another kind of just like said the whole Valora story to me right there. I showed this to the greater team and our designer, Peter Noel, took a lot of prompt from it. Um, but what we got some feedback from it that it looked expressive, easy and fun. But what we ultimately want to head towards is trustworthy, stable and accessible. So we tinkered with it a little bit. We landed here. We added some girth to that V, but still maintaining that reach that you get coming from that stem. Um, and then I asked Peter to throw a circle into that V. And what I started seeing was a bunch of great visual analogies that I, I thought fit the brand story very well. This included uh, a power pose. It's something that we all naturally do when we feel empowered and we accomplish something, we throw our arms up into the air, tilt our chin back, and our, we're filled with pride and accomplishment. And this is something I, I was hoping to, to have our users be able to feel in, in using um, Valora and hopefully the, the prosperity that they can start experiencing. I also thought about how uh, a vase, like an, a vase and maybe like a table or a centerpiece in a room comes up to a point through the, the neck of the, of the ceramic and then what we choose to put in there is the beauty that we see in the world. Um, and the natural beauty we see in the world and flowers. And we start seeing that same trajectory from the V and, and up and outward, and we see uh, the beauty that's held there. And uh, lastly, I, I think of the, the, the gesture that we have when we're holding something precious that we, we believe, personally believe is valuable. This happens to be a shell, but you can imagine swapping out a shell for a coin or precious stone or even a small heirloom. The idea of that we hold the things that we value with that same tenderness as sort of that V-shape. And then I had my, uh, my designer, Peter, spread them out horizontally, and I started seeing arches. And I was, I was curious, like, do arches fit into the brand story as well? Can it play to some of those adjectives that we wanted to achieve in, in the letter form? I did some nerding out and some art history and architecture, uh, uh, like, uh, like looking up and uh, I found that once that that keystone which is that brown stone placed amongst those other uh, supporting stones is placed there is a downward force that creates uh, some very powerful uh, uh, innovation that we saw throughout architecture in the past uh, that pressure is put, pushed down and out creating one of the most stable um, feats in, in uh, primitive architecture So this is the Roman aqueduct, and this is a screenshot from a teacher talking about the Roman aqueduct. The, the arches repeated over and over again is, was pointed out through those red lines that the, the neighboring arch would support the, the, the following arch onward and onward. What I loved seeing about this is uh, the analogy of if these arches are something that are built, are able to build on top of one another. I think about one community prospering and then the next community over time be able to prosper on top of that and then on top of that. Arches are also found throughout all different cultures. This is something we really look forward to leveraging as we take our story into new markets. And then lastly, I asked Peter to throw those circles on top of the V. And we started seeing a group of people able to throw their arms up and have pride in that power pose. Uh, this is something I, I would love to see Valora be able to achieve, to bring this sort of prosperity to, to communities all over the world. And as we moved from the V out to the other letter types, we used arches as a strong reference to inform other letter forms. You could see the L being the column, the O being the negative space, of the arch and the R and the A playing to the, the, uh, the contour of those other arch forms. And this is ultimately where we landed. The, the icon on the left and the letter form on the right. The icon has a gold on the bottom left to, uh, that signifies the, the gold ring, a part of the cello logo, also the, it represents the native asset. And then to the green, uh, up to the top right, re representing the green ring, 
uh, and the solid dollar and stable currencies built on top of the native asset. Um, I am extremely excited for everyone to get their hands on this app. And with that, I'm gonna uh, wrap up and send this over to Nihail, uh, who is gonna be talking about Pace of Base. Thanks. Thanks, Taylor. Hi, all. Um, just gonna tell you about uh, Pace of Base. And our, our mission is basically we want to financially connect Africans everywhere. And um, you know, coming to Australia in 2003, the reality was that sending money was not easy. And, and, and years later, I've always thought that this thing should keep getting easier and easier. And this is the story of how we think now we're in a position, given the technologies and, and, and the, the work that the life of sale have done, that we'll be able to, uh, to, to, to build this. This is Nyakan, a recent graduate and earns about 3,000 monthly. She sends money uh, constantly to her father and family to support them. And she's one of 30 million Africans who live outside the country of birth. And essentially what that means is that often whatever they go to do is to earn economic uh, empowerment and to be able to send money back home. Pesabase wants to build a solution that connects these Africans back to their family's home. And we want to make it easy for them to send money cheaply, to send money fast, and to be able to send it at cost effective prices. This is me. From 2003, when I first arrived in Australia, it didn't take me that many months to start sending money back home to my family. One of the things that happens with us Africans in general is that we tend to have close ties to our families and we want to support them. We know a lot of the things that they've gone through and we work hard to try and make them strong as a result. And so when I came here, the first thing I started doing was to send money. And I, and this act of sending money every so often made me realize that there should be a better solution. Uh, what I saw was that there's a lot of manual ways of doing it, there's a lot of expensive ways of doing it, and there was no connectivity. I could not send my brother money and within five minutes he'll message back me and say, hey, thanks, you just paid for my lunch. I wanted to build that to improve my own life, to improve my community's life, and to connect Africans everywhere and build eventually better financial services for them. how it works. Let's just take a look at some of the work that we did during Celocom. So if you look at that, we built a very simple app, effectively an easy way to onboard onto the crypto ecosystem, an easy way to offload off it. And we think that over time, users will tend to actually use it more and more between themselves because it's simply a better product. It's simply an easier way of holding your wealth and it's simply an easier way of transacting and a cheaper way of doing it. And so with every transaction, there's actually a solo transaction on the back end on the blockchain. And the costs are so minute that eventually my expectations is that every user will end up being able to do all manner of transactions like this. So we're really excited when we build this and came to the notice of the solo team and the Celocom community, as well as the guys of Adright. When we built it, we thought, this is just a prototype. There's a lot more that we need to do. We didn't actually expect to be winners, and we were really excited to be announced winners, and we enjoyed that and realized that, yes, this is an acknowledgement of a beginning of a journey that we can definitely become better and build a more powerful solution that solves these problems for communities. So I just, in closing, I just want to say thank you. And the reality is that this is just a journey and the beginning of a journey for the Celo community and the Celo camp as well. They have just launched a Celo camp too and they're about to accept applications for that. If you think and you believe in the mission that the crypto community is embarking on, then you should definitely apply and become a part of this movement. Thank you. So I'll hand over now and Alone will definitely talk more about it. Thank you, Niall, and hello to everyone. My name is Alon Shavit, and I'm Celocamp's program director. Celocamp is a virtual acceleration program for startups building apps on the Celo blockchain. It was great to see teams from more than 60 nations around the globe sharing their ideas of what can be built on the Celo blockchain. If you have a startup idea and you share our mission of bringing prosperity to all, I have a great news for you. 
drum roll, Cello Camp Batch 2 is coming this September. So please send us your application at cellocamp.com. I will share the link uh, at the chat below. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the presentation. Hi everyone, I'm Sochi. And I'm excited to talk to you today about how Cello can be used to provide microloans to anyone with a mobile phone. But I'd first like to start with a story. We met Jorge this summer in Colombia. He's a lifelong entrepreneur and father. He immigrated to Colombia with the hope of providing a better life for his family. He works as a bike messenger by day, but dreams of owning his own business again. Jorge hasn't just rebuilt his own life in Bogota. He has helped his community rebuild their lives as well. The lack of formal solutions prompted him to start his own saving circle with a group of fellow immigrants. Together, they establish financial goals, access money they need, and support each other on the path towards achieving those goals. Across the world, friends and family lend money to each other. A loan on Cello turns a common community practice into a credit building activity that can help communities prosper. We started this pilot in Colombia during a pandemic. As families around the world are under shelter in place, more people are turning to delivery services. The delivery service market is expected to grow from 540 billion in 2019 to 824 billion by 2023. Demand for couriers is booming and immigrants like Jorge are helping to fill this demand. Most of the couriers in Colombia use a manual pedal bicycle, but a motorized bicycle is a game changer. As part of our pilot, each participant received a $500 loan to purchase a beach cruiser that was retrofitted with a 66C two-stroke motor. This bike not only extended their range and speed, but doubled their income. Lending on Cello has several advantages over traditional finance, financial institutions. It provides access to anyone with a mobile phone, offers better terms, provides increased transparency, allows for programmability, and most importantly, it offers someone like Jorge and his community a mobile identity and a credit history. Let's dive into a few of these benefits. In the absence of formal credit solutions, people turn to informal ones, borrowing money from a friend or from a family member. Reputation and relationships are essential to informal lending networks. We looked at the best of these informal networks and used it as a basis to assess credit worthiness and likelihood of repayment. In the case of Jorge, he was able to use his social collateral to vouch for others to obtain a loan. What we found was a small loan could have a huge impact on someone's life. This is Darwin. He was the top performer during the pilot, earning four times the minimum wage simply by using a motorbike. On average, across the cohort of 55 individuals, incomes doubled. This loan placed these individuals on a different trajectory in life. And at an institutional level, the lack of transparency is a huge risk. One microfinance institution we spoke to had to replace their entire country team because of fraud. A loan on Cello provides more transparency to the entire financial chain, providing tighter financial controls. This was actually put into action during the pilot when we caught a fraud attempt thanks to the traceability through the financial chain. The P2P lending market is expected to reach 589 billion by 2025. I'd like to challenge us all here today to reframe our definition of DeFi. How might we use the power of decentralized finance for good to offer a micro loan to anyone with a mobile phone? Informal financial solutions are built on the foundation that communities will help each other. It can work exceptionally well for small groups, but doing it analog prevents scale. A microloan on Cello has the potential to reward trust, help communities prosper, and connect those with capital to those without. For Jorge and his community, we've already seen an immediate impact to their daily lives. How might we empower and scale even more communities with solutions like this on Cello. If you're interested in learning more about DeFi for good and our work in Colombia, please come find me at the virtual booth. I'd now like to turn it over to Merrick, who's gonna provide a technical update. 
Thanks, Sochi. So now that you've seen Velora, let's take a look at the platform that's powering it. The network is composed of three types of nodes. At the center lie 100 validators elected through proof of stake using the Hans algorithm. These validators perform PBFT consensus similar to Tendermint, but with one big difference, which is that Celo uses the BLS 12377 elliptic curve, which allows validator signatures to be aggregated into a single multisig. This also lets us create efficient ZK snark proofs that can reason about the validity of a header. Next, a number of full nodes play the role of servicing like clients and connecting them to validators. Full nodes on the Celo network are incentivized and receive a portion of transaction fees for any transaction that they forward from a like client. And finally, Celo's like clients sit at the edge of the network, connecting with full nodes using the Plumo like client protocol. Now, before we talk about what's next, I wanted to spend just a quick moment to look back on the past few months. The Celo mainnet release candidate was launched on Earth Day on April 22nd, and it was stood up by a quorum of community validators. Now, the choice of Earth Day was not an accident. Celo is committed to preserving the environment. In fact, part of the network's epoch rewards are going towards Project REN to carbon offset the electricity required to operate the network. Now, since launch, the network has already paid out $6,000 towards carbon, carbon offsetting. Now, soon after this, uh, through Celo's on-chain governance, the community turned on validated elections and voting rewards. And here's a map showing the locations of validators and full nodes shortly after this moment. It's really exciting to see the geographic diversity of the network, which has continued in this direction day by day. You can view the current validator set and other information about the network at thecello.com, which was created by BI23Labs, one of the elected validators on the network. You can also view the health of the network by going to stats.cello.org. Since and since everything was running smoothly a few days after elections were enabled, the community voted to turn on transfers of the Celo asset and deemed the network the Celo mainnet chain. Since then, we've been working hard to prepare for the Valora launch. And to that end, we launched a distributed oblivious directory service, which helps maintain the privacy of Celo users' phone numbers. And as Rennie and Nitya mentioned before, Celo maintains a map of hashes of phone numbers to wallet addresses that lives on chain, making it very easy to send payments to people in your contact list on your phone. Now to help maintain user privacy, each phone number is hashed with a unique and high entropy salt that can be queried from this oblivious directory service. And the service uses threshold cryptography so that lookup requests are encrypted and not viewable by the operators of these nodes. And critically, so that a threshold of nodes is required to reconstruct any salt. Since each of these nodes rate limit requests from other users, even the operators of the service itself cannot infer the salts for a large number of phone numbers. As part of this launch, we performed the first ever DKG on the Celo network, which is also really, really exciting. Now, this section wouldn't be complete without mentioning the launch of Celo Dollars. The currency has been live for around a week now and um, has been holding its peg as seen here uh, on the graph showing its past price. There's now 5.8 million Celo Dollars in circulation, which are collateralized by a basket of crypto assets valued at over $217 million. Now, CUSD is a ERC-20 compatible token on the Celo network. And as Rennie mentioned, you can pay for transaction fees with it. So if you've been frustrated with how transaction fees uh, for ERC-20 tokens on other networks work, we invite you to check out Celo Dollars. Celo is fully EVM compatible, and so it's easy to redeploy your work. And Celo Dollars are backed in part by ETH. So if you're an ETH holder, that should make you happy as well. Now, on to what's next. 
And now... <laughs> and now on to what's next. With the Valora launch imminent... With the Valora launch imminent, C-Labs is organizing a key ceremony for Plumo, which is Celo SNARK-based like-line protocol. Plumo is built on top of the Zexi library, and we've developed the SNARK circuit and tooling to perform the ceremony. There will be two phases to the ceremony, both on the BW6 curve. In phase one, we'll be doing a general powers of tau ceremony that can be used with any Groth16 SNARK, Planck, or Marlin system. In phase two, we'll run a follow-up ceremony for the Plumo circuit that will be using the Groth16 proof system. And the ceremony is open to everyone, and only one honest participant is required in each phase. So if you're interested in participating, join the Plumo channel on chat.cello.org. We're also making major improvements for the validator community. Like other proof-of-stake networks, Cello lets validators use hardware wallets to securely sign blocks, and in our case, using a custom-built Ledger Nano X validator application. Now, however, in these COVID times, where visiting a data center and using a physical hardware device can be challenging, C-Labs has heard from the validator community that they want more options for how to secure their validator keys. And so to that end, we're working on a new multi-validator setup that uses BLS 12377 threshold signatures to allow validators to securely split their validator key across three heterogeneously configured machines. This also helps with validator uptime and the related slashing risks as only a subset of validator machines need to be running to sign blocks. We're doing this using Raft to elect, new valid to elect a new validator whenever one of your validator machine goes down, which prevents accidental double signing. This also makes it easier to upgrade validator nodes without risking downtime. Now, slashing is a major concern for validators, and the security of the network is paramount. This change will make things even better than they are now on both fronts. Look for this release later this summer. So with that, I want to hand it back over to Rennie. Thanks, Marek. So this concludes our first Kuneko. Uh, thank you to all my, my fellow amazing uh, speakers uh, for, for the exciting updates uh, coming out of the Cello community, really exciting. Um, and of course, thank you everyone for tuning in. Thanks for the great uh, questions in, in the chat. Um, this was fun. Um, and you know, going forward, I think we'll, we'll do these uh, roughly on a, on a monthly schedule and you'll meet uh, projects, other projects building on Cello. You hear updates about the technical roadmap, of course, from core contributors and, and other key announcements. Make sure to uh, tune in for our uh, workshop tomorrow if you want to um, do a deeper dive on the technology. And uh, also, as, as Nita presented, um, you know, uh, you can request early access to Valora and help us um, make this uh, even better ahead of the uh, general availability launch. And uh, to that extent, uh, please visit our virtual booth through the Unitize homepage. And you can also uh, learn more about CelloCamp there and um, you know, chat, chat with the team. And with that, uh, I invite you all to continue the conversation on Discord, uh, which you can easily find uh, by going to chat.cello.org. And uh, again, we look forward to connecting with you all at the next Kuneko. Thank you all for the collaboration. Um, this is an exciting journey. And looking at the clock, it looks like I have a little bit of extra time. And so since there were a lot of questions about how to make a Cello logo at home, um, I'll do a quick demonstration. You take one donut and then you take another donut and you kind of try to angle them at the perfect level. And then there you go. It's as easy as it can be. If you don't want to leave your house because it's still, you know, shelter in place, there's some great donut recipes, um, which are quite cumbersome and require a lot of cooking oil. But heck, you get a salad logo. Um, and with that, 
I leave you all and see you all soon. Thank you.